representation attached to it because that would insinuate that all African people, all Indian people and Asian people that were formerly colonized, formerly went through slavery and formerly went through occupation from the West uh, deserved it because they were barbaric and uncivilized. If this is the first video you are coming across, if you haven't seen the part one to this video, I am going to advise you to go check it out because that is going to give you the full context as to how we got here. This is going to be a continuation of the very first part. And if you just want to continue this particular video, let me just give you a little fast breakdown on what is going on. A creator on TikTok had made a video talking about how people treat the Holocaust like the worst thing that has ever happened in human history and just went on about how some of the things are highlighted and slavery is not like talked about and people don't care as much about slavery about black people and people of color she has well said that the reason why people talk about the holocaust so much and why it is so highlighted in history today why so many people know about it is because it is because israel has paid for it to be like that this white creator which i think has a family in israel or whatever decided to stitch to her video saying she has to be out of reality to be comparing atrocities and in the same breath he went ahead as well to compare atrocities basically and he went on to say the reason why the holocaust is like the worst thing that has ever happened in human history is because it happened to civilized people he opened the door for so many people to come in and this is the reason why this is the part two of what people are saying about this video while we are going into the part two to hear what these people have to say, I am starting this clip with his apology or something that seems like his apology and he started it by saying his fans think that he did not do anything wrong. And mind you, he is a white creator, majority of his followers are white. So that explains it all. Without wasting much time, let's just get right into it. A lot of my fans still don't think I did anything wrong, which I think is interesting because not only have I acknowledged that I've fucked up, but in acknowledging that I fucked up, I also fucked up. Like, I've been re-watching the apology that I uploaded yesterday, and a lot of it is just bad. There's a lot of things that people are rightfully hurt and upset at me for that I just kind of glossed over. Like, why didn't I acknowledge that I minimized the transatlantic slave trade by implying it wasn't as bad because it happened over a longer period? Why didn't I apologize for conflating the Western world with the whole world? Talk about the implications of what it means when I said other genocides happened in far-off corners of the world. How dangerous it could have been to frame the Holocaust as uniquely horrific when every genocide is uniquely horrific in some way. Like, why was it so easy for me to directly call out Madison's actions as enabling anti-Semitism? but not my own for enabling racism. And instead just said that they were weird. And why could I not see this until it was pointed out to me? I've mentioned that a lot of the issues in my first video are a byproduct of the fact that I was immediately triggered and then responded out of emotion when I shouldn't have. But then I had an entire day to calm down and think things through and not respond emotionally. And I did it again. Like part of that was probably that it was too soon. And even though I didn't realize it, I was still sitting in that exact same headspace, which is why I felt such a strong need to clarify the exact same point. But a huge part of this was probably an immediate instinct to take advantage of my own privilege and not sit in discomfort. Like I have sat in discomfort plenty of times in my life. I'd like to think that's how I've gotten to the person I am now, but this is the first time I've had to do it publicly. And so my gut instinct was not to. So I'm sorry for the initial harm I caused, the anti-black rhetoric, the lack of real accountability and doubling down when I did not need to. I've seen a bunch of comments and messages from people saying things like, oh my God, Yuval, I, I understood you the entire time. You were being perfectly clear. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. But objectively, my words were harmful to a lot of people. But this is also an example to others because I know quite a few people are particularly upset because of who I am. Right? I'm, I, I'm not just a, the linguistics guy. If you look at a lot of my linguistic videos, you'll notice that a bunch of them are not really about linguistics. They're about how people use language to reinforce classism and racism. I talk about that constantly. A lot of people in my comments have been recommending that I read Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. I've actually already read Cast. It's a great book. I featured it in two of my videos. And still, it is from me from which all this came. White people in particular in our activism, we need to remember that that is not enough to truly unlearn everything. Some blind spots are very, very deep. There are probably still things in this video that I missed or forgot to say, but I am still trying to find them. I am in like a weird way thankful that this happened to me because it's opened up a very good discourse in which I have learned quite a bit. I'm gonna tag two creators who responded to me with videos that I thought were particularly helpful. That would be the downballot.org and Pimani. I would like to thank the both of you for responding in a way that was very respectful and informational because you were responding to a video that wasn't. And most of the videos I've seen have been very helpful and respectful other than, you know, like the memes. I'm not responding to Madison or messaging her directly because towards the end of her last video, 
She said she did not want to continue a back and forth, so I'm assuming she does not want that. I'm not exactly sure what to do with my last video. You know, I want to make sure I take accountability, but I also worry that if I don't take it down, I'll spread more misinformation and hate because a lot of the issues that were in my first video have been pointed out to me or in my second. In case I do take it down, I want to be clear. I'm, of course, still incredibly sorry for the amount of hate that I caused Madison by using very aggressive and hateful rhetoric even if I didn't realize it at the time. All of this has made me think I should revisit how I use this platform because I'm really disappointed in myself for the things I said and the harm I caused, and I don't ever want to do that again. Also, if you're white and you're about to say, apology accepted, you've all, don't. Like, I didn't do anything to you. No one has to accept my apology, right? Like, what I'm going to do is going to be the same regardless, but like, you especially, like the fuck? I've seen a lot of people recommend Holocaust Industry by Norman Finkelstein. I do like reading, particularly nonfiction. So if you have any other book recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments. At the very least, this can be a nice learning opportunity for everybody. So yeah, I really am sorry. I know this is all on me. I hope this acknowledges everything in a way that's more appropriate and doesn't cause the same harm. But if it does, I'm, I'm always appreciative of the feedback. So thank you. At the time of the Berlin Conference in 1884-1885, there was this pervading sentiment around Europe that in order to be a civilized country, you needed to have colonial holdings. Which is why the European countries met in Berlin in the first place to split up Africa into different territories that they would then control. There was a direct correlation between the civilization of Europe and the subjugation of different people across the globe, particularly in this case Africans. Now, of course, this conference happened in Berlin, which is in Germany, but if we think about the different countries in Africa and who their colonizers were, we don't typically think about Germany. We think about Britain and France, Portugal, Spain, and Belgium, and to a lesser extent, Italy. But at the end of the Berlin Conference, Germany did have a couple of different um, territories within Africa that they were supposed to oversee. However, flash forward to World War I, which is only about 30 years after the Berlin Conference, mind you. One of the earliest battles of World War I, in fact the first time that Allied shots were fired, happened not in Europe, but in Togo then called Togoland. Now Togoland was one of the very few African colonies held by Germany and at the end of World War One, it and the other territories um, held by Germany were split between the Allied powers, mostly Britain and France. And we think about the industrialization that was happening in Europe at the time, I feel like a lot of the times we forget that that industrialization was directly linked to the extraction of resources and labor of territories overseas. I just think that this context is important because it helps us understand the myriad reasons why a country like Germany, for instance, was brooding such, you know, strong ideas of national and also resentment of other European countries leading up to World War II. In fact, the damage that was caused across Europe in World War II was one of the leading factors that the Europeans decided that they needed to give up their colonies in Africa at the end of World War II, mostly in the late 50s and 60s. It wasn't because at the time Europeans just decided that Africans suddenly deserved their freedom. It was because Europe was so decimated during World War II that it was essentially just too expensive for them to control their colonies any longer. That and the fact that many Africans actually fought on behalf of Europeans during World War II, and there was a sentiment across Africa that why are we fighting for your freedom when we should be fighting for ours? And I say this all the time, I'm no historian, I'm just interested in my people's, you know, contributions and place within world history in general. But I do think that it's wild to say that Europe was considered universally civilized in comparison to the rest of the world, when the people that were being subjugated in order to, you know, prop up that European civilization would likely have a very, very different take. It has come to my attention as a man on this app that is making claims about the Holocaust and how the Holocaust isn't the worst thing in the world, but he describes it as the worst thing to happen to civilized people, which has a racial connotation attached to it because that would insinuate that all African people, all Indian people and Asian people that were formerly colonized, formerly went through slavery and formerly went through occupation from the West uh, deserved it because they were barbaric and uncivilized. The problem I have with this argument is that, you know, we, in modernity, we can't fathom the actual impact of the transatlantic slave trade. And I'm black, so I'm going to speak to this. We can't fathom, we can't grasp in our mind the impact that that specific time and that specific human atrocity had in the modern world. Countries have been formulated. Regions of the world would not exist. The Caribbean wouldn't exist. Latin America wouldn't exist without this one thing. America wouldn't exist. Canada without this one thing that transpired. And we're talking about capturing, murder, enslavement, capture, murder, since the 1500. We're not talking about something that happened over a four or five year span, not to diminish anything else that happened to anyone in the world. So what we don't wanna do is get into the oppression Olympics, but what we don't wanna do is to perpetuate the cycle of systemic racism tied to how we 
acknowledge and how we revere each type of tragedy that happened in the, in the world. I grew up in New York and I vividly remember every single year of my elementary, junior high and high school. We watched movies on Anne Frank. We watched things about the Holocaust. We saw Holocaust survivors to, to put into our heads that this atrocity was worse than anything. It's worse than anything. And the fear of this happening again, you have to support Israel. You have to support Jews because this can happen again. That doesn't happen for us. So when the original poster said that, you know, this tragedy is revered as one of the greatest tragedies in human history and because they paid for it, there is some truth to that. I, myself, a black man, was socialized as a child to believe that the Jews went through something that no one else on earth had went through. Me, a product of slavery and colonialism and that speaks this language and exists in this way, I was made to feel like their scenario was worse than mine. And why we know so little about the transatlantic slave trade and the impact of slavery on a human level, an economic scale, a developmental level is by, is by design. We're designed to look at history through the lens of the oppressor, through the lens of Europeans, through the lens of the people that structure this new world and the system which they benefit economically from till this day. America is the richest country in the world because of slavery. It's as simple as that. So let's not get online and try to be holier than thou and use these grandiose ideologies and, terminate, and terminologies that you're throwing out while all of that is rooted in racism and you're proving the point of the original poster. Hope that helps. Bye. I have been following the Yuval thing closer than I should have, and here's what I have to add. Not too long ago, I went on a walk with an older family member, and he made a racist comment about it's a shame how people want to remove statues. I said, do you mean statues of slaveholders? He said, yeah. He said, even if it's the past, it's part of who we are, and we shouldn't be removing it. I immediately asked him, would you feel comfortable having a statue of Adolf Hitler in our public spaces? And he said, of course not. He did horrible things. There's no way I would allow that to happen. And the Holocaust had extreme levels of atrocities that could fill libraries. These atrocities were in large part outcroppings of white supremacy. Involved dehumanization, stigmatization, unequal civil rights, forced displacement, violence against property, extreme torture, murder, extermination. All things that people of color have suffered on a massive scale for millennia at the hands of white supremacy and imperialism. Yuval was immediately activated when he felt that the horror of the Holocaust wasn't accurately depicted, not realizing the irony of the way that he was saying that. Even if Holocaust education is not what it needs to be in the United States, it has entered the mainstream consciousness enough that lots of people, including my conservative older relatives, recognize the seriousness of that event in a way that they don't do for people of color that they interact with every day. I think ignoring that fact, I, I do have distaste for that. I think that kind of thinking at the extreme results in a country where the majority of people um, can express uh, dismay and horror at the events of 80 years ago, um, but not seem to muster an ounce of abject horror at children being melted by bombs right now living children right now having that happen to them so i'm sure you've seen yuval's video that has since been taken down or you've seen a stitch of it or somebody with their two cents and here i am to put in my two cents as somebody who has studied the holocaust and world war ii for 10 years i've written a course about it i have taught about it i'm writing a book about how to teach about world war ii better because it's not taught about very well in the united states and this is very relevant to this conversation and i'm also writing a very controversial book a comparative analysis of the genocides and why we only teach about one. This video is going to be really long and it's going to be several parts and I'm going to say a lot of words that the algorithm really doesn't like, so make sure to interact, please. So this all started when a black creator said that Israel paid for the Holocaust to be prominent in American and Western education. And they are correct. And then Yuval went on a seven minute tirade about it. Now, I think Yuval said that word choice matters and it does. And his word choice was not super great in his video. So when you say Israel paid for 
Holocaust education. What you mean is Israeli lobbyists, Israeli organizations, and organizations like the United Holocaust Memorial Museum paid for it. The reason why most people think that the Holocaust is the worst tragedy to ever happen to humanity in the modern era is because Israel paid for that to be the reality. Because it, the numbers just actually aren't there. Yes, they are. You have to be so willfully detached from reality to even begin to suggest that the only reason that the Holocaust is taken as seriously as it is is because Israel paid for it. Saying things like this really triggers some people because it makes you think that it's an anti-Semitic trope of the Jews control the world with money. Now that is anti-Semitic, but it's factual to say that Israeli organizations lobby for Holocaust education. Israel has in fact paid for it since the late 1960s, and until then there were only a few books, namely a book by Hannah Arndt and another by Raoul Hilberg, and those were very controversial. Raoul actually had like over 20 members of his family perish in the Holocaust, so he's very connected to this, and he's one of the leading prominent Holocaust historians. And when his book came out, The Destruction of the European Jew, everyone was like, no, we don't want to dredge up the past. Don't talk about it. Especially American Jews who wanted to distance themselves from Israel. In 1967, after the Israelis won in an Arab-Israeli war, the U.S. decided that Israel would be a good proxy for power in the Middle East. And that's when people started to remember the Holocaust and fear this propaganda that there would be a second Holocaust to come. That's why they needed all this power. That, along with saying that anything that is criticism of Israel is just inherently anti-Semitic, is all part of Israeli propaganda to garner support and deflect criticism. I want to be clear, I think it's strange to say anything is the worst thing to ever happen in human history because I think it is bizarre to rank tragedies. Many people have pointed out the pure irony in you saying that it's bizarre to compare or rank tragedies and then you go on to promote the complete uniqueness of the Holocaust, thereby ranking it above everything else. But I also think it is very weird to respond to somebody who's saying, I think X is the worst thing to ever happen to humankind, whether that be the Holocaust Cost, slavery, colonialism, and respond by going, um, well, actually, and then citing some other event that had a larger body count. Are you not well actualing her? I really love the creator who actually highlighted the point where he said it is the worst thing that happened because it happened to civilized people. So does that mean that all African people, all Asian people, Indian people formally colonized? Does that mean that they are uncivilized and barbaric? Because what exactly is the point of saying is the worst thing that has happened to civilized people? Like, what are you trying to say? Because you're kind of like dismissing what she said while still saying the same thing that this lady has been saying so there was no point to me she it was just on the yapping but thanks to him for saying it because if not for that we would not be having this very important conversation i believe i'm not the only one who have gotten so much information from everything that these people have to say i'm not even done digesting everything that you have been saying i have to still take my time and watch time and time again to be able to digest every single thing that they have been saying if you learn from this video make sure you not only watch but make sure you share with your friends and family who you think might want to know more about all of this as well this person said let's be real slavery especially in the usa shaped the world we live in today fact the world will be unimaginably different had chattel slavery not happened especially in the americas the fact that we know more about the holocaust than any other genocide is extremely intentional which is exactly what this lady was talking about and she even went into the pattern at which history is being taught in school acknowledging that isn't comparing tragedies it is just the freaking truth another person said also, those people think that slavery was only black Americans when all over the world there were slaves, like in the Caribbean, they enslaved the indigenous people. The fact that most black Americans have European ancestry is an indicator of how fucked up the breeding program was after they abolished the slavery. Truly horrific what little details I discovered. Another person said, slavery built nations literally. When I was a field archaeologist, learning about slavery was one of the most painfully gruesome things I have ever learned about. Another one said, people comparing abortion to slavery when enslaved women drowned their babies because slavery was so sad. That was how bad it was, like literally making a party while a black person had been on alive. The UK just finished paying reparations to slaveholders a few years ago and have never 
paid reparations to families of formerly enslaved people. Like even British people didn't really understand that that is where their tax money was going. And that's without even getting into the US and every other thing else. Let me hear what you guys think about this conversation. If you follow along from the very first video that started this conversation to part one of the stitches and now part two, let me know one thing you have been able to learn and let me know what you think about what this white man said that literally made everybody started coming in with solid information, teach people, just kind of shut him up with the misinformation that he has been spreading. Let me hear your take in the comment section. I will catch you guys in the next episode.